In the previous film, we saw that any country will gain on international trade. It doesn't matter if you are in importing or exporting a good. We will have a net gain in each country. In this film, we're going to look at the trade barrier tariff. A tariff is a kind of a uh, tax on, in this case, imported good, but it could also be that exporting countries introduces export tariffs, of course. But we will concentrate on the, on the importing country. So we make the assumption that we have a small country. Uh, so we'll have a supply function and a demand function, and we see how that uh, if we didn't have an in international trade, we have an intersection and therefore an equilibrium in the auto key up there somewhere. But in this case, we have a world pr price that is much lower than the auto key price should have been. So we see uh, that the, the producers in this country will be competitive up to the world market price. So as long as the, their marginal cost is less than or equal to the marginal, uh, sorry, the, the price in the world, uh, they will be competitive. And we also see that um, this is the price that the consumers will have to pay. So they're going to consume much, much more than what we're producing inside this country. So we'll have an import of the difference between the consumption and the production at world price. The government now wants to increase the domestic production. So they set up a target. This is the quantity that we want to achieve. But when we look at this, we're going to see that the marginal cost for the last produced unit, the target unit here, will be that much, which is much, much, much higher than the world market price. So to be able to, uh, we know that the producer that produces that one has to have that marginal cost covered. So we can either increase the, the market price or decrease the production cost. So with the tariff, we're going to increase the market price. So we introduce a tariff that will increase the market price from P1 up to P1. So the difference between P1 and P1 will become the tariff. And therefore, all of the imported goods will be tariff units much higher at co uh, to, to import. So therefore, we see here that the consumption will decrease due to the case that they have to ha have to pay a higher price for this good now. So when we look at this, we can start by looking at the production, the, the producers, and we see that the producer surplus will increase by the area A1 due to the case that they are now have uh, receive higher payments for each of the unit that they produced originally. Uh, and they will also increase the product, uh, producer surplus with the area A2, which is the uh, increased production sold to a higher price than the marginal cost of producing each unit. But these two areas are also losses to the consumers due to the case that these units are now sold to a higher price. So therefore, the consumers will have to pay a higher price than they did originally. So therefore, that these areas will also be uh, loss in consumer surplus. So A1 and A2 will be positive producer surplus and negative consumer surplus. But we will also have a loss in consumer surplus due uh, uh, with this area D, which is the decreased consumption. So th these units will no longer be consumed. So that is, of course, then, of course, a, a loss in consumer surplus. We will also have a loss in consumer surplus due to the Area B, which could be looked upon as, as the, the cost of producing much, much more costly inside our country than by the equivalent uh, commodities from, from abroad. And we will have this last Area C. We know that the import with the tariff price will be that much. So the new import will be that much. And we have a tariff per unit that is the difference between P1 and P1, so that's the tariff. So therefore, area C here will be tariff revenues to the government. So this will go into the government. But it will also be a loss in consumer surplus. So when we add them up, we see uh, that A1, A2, and C are positive for producers uh, and or um, government, but it are also negative for consumers. So A1, A2, and C will be plus minus zero. And then we have area D and area B, 
which are losses to consumers. So that would be a, the total loss in this society due to the case that we have uh, uh, introduced the tariff. So let's calculate a little bit on that. We make the assumption that we have a demand that is uh, price equal to 1200 minus Q, and we have a supply that is the price is equal to quantity. We have a world market price equal to 200, so therefore we will have a production inside this country with 200, and a consumption equal, equal to 1000. The target production is 300 units, so we have to increase the price up to 300. So we introduce a tariff that is uh, either you can express it as 100 units of money or uh, as 50%. Uh, and therefore the consumption will be reduced down to 900 units. So if we look at this, we have the area of A1 and A2, B, C and D. And if we calculate them, we see that area A1 is 200 times 100, that's 20,000. A2, that's 100 times 100 divided by 2, that's 5,000. We have area B, which is 100 times 100 divided by 2, which is also equal to 5,000. Area C, the tariff revenues, is 600 times 100, that's 60,000. And the area D is equal to area B in this case, so 5,000 units. So, when we look at this, we see and that the change in this, uh, consumer surplus is minus area A1, A2, B, C, and D. So that is the sum of all of these, so they will have minus 95,000. The change in producer surplus is uh, positive A1 and A2, and we see that those uh, add up to 25,000. And area C is the uh, tax revenues, the tariff revenues from the government, for, to the government, so that will be 60,000. So when we un, uh, add them all together, we will ha end up with a net society of minus B and D. And that is the dead weight loss of this introduction of this tariff.